Okay, so I think it's time to start the webinar, so let's start. So hello everybody, welcome to the webinar about volume optimization by Cases, GridPro and TCFD. In today's webinar, we would like to show you a way how to optimize an existing compressor volume. We have performed a study where the particular volute is optimized by reducing its pressure loss using an automated CAE workflow. I hope everything works well. We are running live, so in case of any technical problems, feel free to contact us and we will gladly answer all your questions and comments. The webinar is being recorded and its recording will be made publicly available. And at the end of the webinar, there will be a Q&A session dedicated to your questions and our answers. So feel free to ask your questions anytime and uh, you can you can find a question form uh, down in the menu. So it will be our pleasure to answer all your questions. Uh, I think it's time to move. So to avoid any misunderstanding right in the beginning, I would like to stress out that uh, this is a three way webinar of three independent companies. Uh, we have synergy products and we would like to show you uh, how well they work together and all of them are standalone tools. They are independent on each other. Uh, I guess you know that Friendship System is a German company that produces a parametric CAT system called Cases. Uh, Program development company is a US company that produces a high quality meshing tool called GridPro. And finally, CFD support is a Czech company that produces uh, an automated CFD tool called DCFD. Uh, please let me introduce the webinar speakers. So this is me. My name is Luboš Perkl. I am co-founder of CFD support and my current job is telling the world about CFD support. I am here in our Prague office uh, with my colleague. Uh, Radek Matsa. Uh, hello, Radek. How are you? Hi, Lubosz. Hi, I'm fine. And it's a pleasure to be a part of this joint webinar. And I am ready for the webinars. <laughs> <laughs> OK, thank you, Radek. That's perfect. So I will only note that Radek is our head engineer and senior developer here at CFD Support. And together with us on the line, there is Matia Brenner. Hello, Matia. How are you? Hi, Lubosz. I'm very well, and it's great to join you uh, for this webinar from Potsdam, Germany today. OK, that's perfect. So I will note that Matthias is the head of sales for Europe at Friendship Systems, and he will be speaking about cases today. And finally, together with us on the line, there is also Samuel James. Uh, hello, Samuel. How are you? Yeah, hello, Lubosz. Glad to join you as well. Okay, perfect. So uh, it seems all of us are ready. I will only note that Samuel is director of program de development company and he will be speaking about GridPro today. So it seems we are all, all ready and we can start. So here's the agenda of today's webinar. The webinar, is, the webinar is going to take about one hour. There will be a few sections in the webinar after this. First introduction, uh, Mattia will introduce cases and he will show how the volute is represented in it. In the next section, there will be uh, Samuel will introduce GridPro and, and he, will, he will show how the volute is meshed in GridPro. And after that, Radek and I will briefly introduce TCFD and show how the volute project uh, of, of the of the volute optimization is, is run and we will discuss the results a little bit. Uh, and finally, in the last part, there will be a QA and a session dedicated to your questions and our answers. So feel free to ask your questions. Uh, some questions will be answered right away in the webinar. The rest will be answered later, li later after the, the webinar is over, but you can be sure that all the, all the questions will be answered. Uh, and before we start inter introducing the project we did, we would like to uh, have your little feedback. Uh, so we would like to ask you a quick question. Uh, uh, what are you interested the most in your current projects? Uh, whether it is a parametric CAT system for robust geometry variation like cases, or whether it is a high quality hexameshing system for parametric variations 
like grid pro or whether it is an effective and automated cfd simulation tool like tcfd i will run a quick poll which is a little query which allow you to to vote so here we go so right now you should be able to see on your screen uh, a poll so i would like to kindly ask you to make your vote so please vote now and i will give it let's say 30 more seconds and then then i will close it and i will show you the show you the results so please make your vote i can see that 60 percent of people already did it so let's give it last 10 seconds so please make your vote make your vote okay and this is it so i'm i'm closing it i think i can show you the show you the results so i guess you can now see the results 39 percent of you answered that that you are interested in cases 22 people in uh, answer they're interested in in grid pro and 29 and tcfd okay thank you very much for your vote it's it's very important feedback for us and we will continue in the webinar uh yeah it tells me i'm still yeah hide the results okay so and let's move on so now it's time for the cases so i would I will ask Mattia. Mattia, are you ready for your part of the presentation? Yes, I'm ready, Luos. That's perfect. So I'm, I'm handing the presentation over to you. So very good. Yes. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Yes, we perfect. can see your screen. You can go ahead. Then, thank you, Luos, for the introduction. And um, so I will. I hope I can address uh, all these people that. Um, uh, mentioned their interest in the poll right now. And as Lubosch introduced already, I will give a, a short introduction, a general introduction into our tool cases, and then um, go into the specifics of how cases can be used specifically for volutes uh, and what we have done for this case study that, that we're gonna look uh, through together with all the different steps in the process. So the target of uh, our product that we are developing here is automation. So uh, I think all of you know quite well that uh, the performance requirements for turbo machinery products, but also for other types of products are raising and raising due to uh, regulations, competition, and, and a good way to reach these performance levels is optimization and automated design processes. And, uh, we think that uh, this approach uh, to design can lead to better and optimized design, reduce the development cycles and times, and also quite important, can increase the knowledge about how the product behaves in the early design phase and uh, give information for later decision, decision making in the design process, sorry. Um, so if we want to automate the process, we need uh, several components. First of all, we need a simulation tool that can provide us the performance information that we need about our product. We need uh, some kind of driver of the optimization process that gives us the algorithms uh, we need uh, to run all of that data management and so on. And we need a suitable CAD tool that can, that can produce the different geometry variants that we're interested in. And these are last two points are what we are trying to address with our tool cases. So uh, as you heard, one point about cases is that it is a CAD system to produce geometry variants. So uh, all of you probably are using some kind of CAD system already. So why do you need another CAD system? And in our experience, most of the typical bottlenecks that people encounter when they're trying to run an automated design process are actually related to the handling of the geometry. And this can be, for example, that the geometry variation fails in some way. So when changing the parameter values, 
the geometry cannot be regenerated or uh, is broken in some ways. That's very typical. Um, constraints are an important point. Uh, so when you're optimizing a geometry, uh, you would like your optimized result at the end to fulfill certain constraints, be it uh, due to manufacturing or packaging uh, limitations, things like that. So it is uh, important to consider these constraints right when you are changing the geometry. Uh, also, sometimes uh, people have the bottleneck that the simulation engineers who are running simulations and optimizations uh, depend on the CAD department to provide geometry and geometry variants or parameterized geometry models. And that's often uh, not so easy to handle because there is uh, yeah, this interface between the different departments. And finally, uh, when you're changing the geometry, you would like uh, the quality of the CAD model uh, to be suitable for the simulation that you want to run af afterwards uh, so that you need no manual cleanup of your geometry, things like that, uh, and can feed uh, your geometry automatically into your simulation system and grid generation before that. So these are the points that we're trying to address uh, with cases. With uh, it's a, So it's a very specialized CAD tool. Uh, that is slightly different from the traditional general purpose uh, mechanical CAD tools, but it's rather um, a, a very focused uh, CAD tool that is specialized on geometry variation for the purpose of uh, automation. So this is um, yeah, just a brief look at the user interface of cases, just to give you an idea of how things look like. And on the next slide, you can see what's inside of cases. So to say in the background, cases is composed of three main components. Uh, the first one that we already briefly talked about is the uh, CAD part of cases, where we uh, try to come up with an efficient parametrization of complex geometries, um, create smart geometry models that can be varied uh, in, in a very robust way and um, take into account all the uh, requirements regarding constraints and uh, yeah, simulation ready behavior. And the next component of cases is the automation. So here uh, the, the system can be coupled through a generic interface to arbitrary external tools uh, that take care uh, of the of the work that we need to do there, like uh, Grid Pro for the grid generation or TCFD as a CFD solver. Uh, so we can send geometry and other input data to these external tools. And then we can collect the results that these tools have uh, provided. Uh, and we can use these results in the final component of cases, which is the optimization, where we have all the algorithms that are necessary uh, to run uh, optimizations, uh, data management to take care of all the data that is created during the optimization process and post-processing so that you can compare results and finally select uh, your preferred uh, geometry variant at the end of the process. Typical uh, applications of cases are um, in the maritime field, as you can see on, on the left, maritime powertrain applications, industrial machinery, and since today we're talking about volutes in the field of turbo machinery, uh, there is also a lot of different applications for cases that go from uh, modeling and optimization of uh, rotating bladed parts like impellers, uh, turbine, rotors, stators, um, but also non-rotating parts like volutes, uh, exit casings, um, and things like that. You can see some examples here in the picture. So um, now I would like to focus in a little bit on uh, volute design. So what are specifically some key cap capabilities of cases for volute design? Um, first of all, we can model any type of volute, pump, compressor, turbine volutes, uh, all kinds of different configurations. So for example, twin double scroll volutes, um, things like that. So there is no limitation in that. Um, of course, as I mentioned before, 
uh, we would we want to have a high robustness <clears throat> and flexibility of these parametric models for our automated design studies uh, so that we can change all the parameters that we used in the modeling of the volute very freely and get a feasible uh, design variance. There are uh, no predefined cross-section types uh, for the volutes uh, in cases, so there is a full freedom for the user to parameterize this cross-section in any way uh, he wants uh, using all the uh, parameters that he wants. You can see some examples uh, here on the right. And uh, typically, for example, these um, cross-sections are controlled uh, with uh, their cross-sectional area or the uh, centroid radius of that area or the A over R ratio, uh, so the area to centroid ratio. And uh, we can build these parameters into the cross-section parametrization so that they are uh, automatically adjusted to fulfill uh, the required value. The uh, tongue area of the volute or cut water, sometimes it's also called, is a very critical area. So of course here we can also do some very uh, detailed modeling and cover all types of um, variant, let's say all variants of this uh, tongue uh, shape. And uh, constraints can also be uh, considered. So for example, if you want to control the area progression of your volute scroll, uh, increase the area around the circumference, uh, but you have a certain limitation with regard to space, uh, you can take these limitations into account and make sure that your cross section uh, grows, so to say, only in the space that is allowed, as you can see in the animation here on the right. Finally, when we have a model, uh, we can integrate it uh, fully into our existing workflows, uh, which involves, for example, uh, preparing automatically clean meshing domains that can be given to our mesh generation, uh, including um, assignment of individual uh, IDs to uh, or unique IDs to individual patches of the geometries, uh, and we can even uh, integrate into the parametric model uh, support structures for structured meshing, as you can see here on the right, lower right picture. So these are, uh, in general, the capabilities for volute modeling in cases. Now I just want to show quickly uh, the uh, geometry part of our case study uh, here for this compressor volute. And uh, the modeling process uh, starts uh, with the cross-section parametrization. So this is the actual cross-section that we used for this uh, compressor volute. You can see uh, several parameters um, described here uh, in the picture. So this is uh, our first step. We parametrize the cross-section and this parametrization is basically used as a template to create cross sections in any angular position around the circumference of the volute. And in a second step, we can create uh, distribution functions for all the parameters that we would like to change when we go around the volute scroll. For example, uh, the A over R ratio, we have a curve uh, here, the blue curve that describes starting uh, from the biggest cross-section, uh, how the uh, A over R ratio changes uh, while we go around one full, full circle of the volute. Uh, the other curve that we see here is the A to B ratio. This is the uh, height-width uh, ratio of the cross-section. You can see here uh, A and B, and this basically controls the shape. If we have a circular shape or rather elongated vertically or horizontally elongated shape. So uh, as a next step, we can combine uh, our cross-section definition with these uh, distribution functions and generate a scroll surface, uh, as you have just seen here. And then we uh, generate the, the outlet duct, basically, uh, and connect it to the scroll with a smooth uh, transition. 
then we offset uh, these surfaces here, this transition surface and the end part uh, of the scroll uh, with a certain amount that is, of course, parametrized uh, and intersect our original surfaces with these offset surfaces. And in the gap uh, that we get here through the intersection, we can fit our tongue surface and model it in a very clean way. And finally, uh, close our inlet and outlet so that we have a watertight fluid domain for our uh, subsequent mesh generation. So uh, now just briefly to uh, show the parameters that we have used in the optimization study. So of course, the whole model of the volute has um, several parameters. Uh, I'm, I don't have the exact figure, but it might be 20, 30 parameters in total that control the shape. Uh, of the volute and we have selected some of these parameters for our optimization study. And the first one is the height width ratio at the outlet cross section of the volute. The parameter is called AB main. So you can see in the animation here uh, what happens to the geometry when we're changing the value of this parameter. Of course, this has the most influence here on the scroll shape. Then we have uh, the height width ratio at the smallest cross section of the volute. So you can see here uh, the changes to the geometry. Uh, then we have the gradient of our A over R uh, distribution at the outlet cross section. So basically we have the value at the outlet cross section uh, fixed for A over R but we're changing the gradient with which this, the A over R curve uh, departs from, uh, from that outlet cross section. So by the way, we can use all kinds of A over R distributions, linear and any type of polynomial functions and uh, whatever uh, you, you choose to use there. Um, then um, we are changing the A over R ratio again at the smallest cross section. You can see the changes again here in the animation. The, um, I don't know, I think might be the final or uh, one before the final parameter is the lateral offset of the outlet diffuser. So you can see the diffuser moves sideways and of course, the intersect tongue intersection here uh, changes as well. And right, this is the last parameter, the tongue sharpness, uh, which uh, changes basically the radius of this tongue surface here. And here uh, in, in this animation, you can see uh, how all these parameters are changing uh, at the same time which is basically what will happen in a design of experiment that we will see later on in, in our uh, description here of the design process. So that's it from my part. I'm gonna give back now for the next steps in the process. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mattia. It was impressive introduction to cases and yeah, it looks very good. And yeah, so we will move on in the in the webinar. So we will switch to the to the next part, which is about Grid Pro. So I will ask Samuel, are you ready for your part? Yes, the worst. Okay, perfect. So I will I will hand over the presentation over to you, which I'm doing right now. Thank you. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, yes we can see your screen. You can go ahead, please. All right. Thank you, Lubos. And uh, hello once again to every participant who is here. So I will give you give a short introduction about GridPro and a quick overview of the meshing process. To uh, introduce ourselves, we um, develop a product called GridPro, which is used for highly automated uh, meshing, especially for parametric variation of geometries. To give a little bit more introduction about us, our company is called Program Development Corporation. It is um, based out of New York. 
we have more than 25 years of expertise in grid generation. We have offices both in US and in India. We started as an SBIR contract out of the Turbo Machine Lab of NASA Glenn Research Center and then moved on to establish ourselves in the industry. Our flagship product is GridPro, which is a unique multi-block grid generation software. So, yeah, why is meshing important? I'm sure that um, many of us uh, or many people who are here would want to get rid of this, but um, just want to focus on a few things which um, uh, <clears throat> which highlight its importance. A recent study that was uh, conducted by NASA on the uh, existing CFD tools, and they came up with a vision for uh, 2030 for all the CFD tools. So these are the primary factors that they identified with respect to meshing, especially as everyone knows, meshing is the most expensive in terms of uh, human intervention. Um, in the CFD workflow, it's, it's still a principal bottleneck, um, especially even if, when it comes to automation. The solution uncertainty and robustness still uh, depends a lot on the resolution of the mesh and um, the accuracy of the uh, CFD solver also uh, depends a, a lot on the quality of the mesh. So if, if, uh, if you want to do a robust and reliable uh, design study, the quality of mesh is um, pretty key because you don't want the optimizer to be uh, uh, looking at all the sensitivities which are caused by the discretization errors. Now, why uh, GridPro uh, Mesh uh, when compared to the other options available in the market? Uh, first, a few uh, general points related to multi-block meshing. Um, one, uh, multi-block meshes give you fluorine grids, which actually gives you better physics uh, capture and also leads to faster convergence. Secondly, the, it reduces the computational problem by an order of magnitude. Here in this example, we see a, see the number of cells are a lot lesser compared to what uh, tet mesh would have. This is primarily uh, because uh, tetrahedron cannot be stretched, whereas uh, hexahedral can be uh, stretched, and a fewer uh, hexahedral cells can fill the domain more efficiently when compared to other uh, shapes. Now, with respect to parallelization, I think where, where every solver and all of us are looking to parallelize the codes. With respect to solvers, it actually uses a better memory bandwidth because it has uh, all the uh, connectivity tables established, which actually helps uh, in efficient parallelization. And uh, with uh, some points which are quite um, uh, exclusive to GridPro, GridPro has a highly automated blocking, which means there are quick, uh, you get quicker meshes and faster CFD uh, results. Some of the uh, reasons why people uh, prefer unstructured meshes is because of its uh, few inherent advantages of addressing complex geometries. So here uh, with GridPro, we have all the abilities to address uh, complex geometries, uh, multi-scale uh, meshes, and uh, uh, local uh, refinement where uh, can be done where gradients are high. It actually has a inbuilt adaptive um, a program called nesting, which you can see on the wind turbine blade here, that you could see that the, the blocks uh, are nested. So you have a really fine mesh near the geometry, and then it coarsens out in the far field. Um, <clears throat> finally, one, uh, one of the major highlights is its uh, quality optimized grid solver. 
So it actually has a robust automatic smoothing with the built in orthogonality and smoothness monitor, which ensures that you have a, a high quality uh, grid uh, when you uh, run the solver. Now, some of the applications uh, which I've highlighted here one turbo machinery, it ranges from wind turbines to gas turbines to compressors, aerospace, automotive um, fuel injectors and um, engine simulations, oil and gas. These are uh, reservoir wells which are on the seabed, and um, also um, different applications in the medical. Uh, field. Uh, I'll first explain the general machine process in Grid Pro, and also then move to the uh, move to our specific case of volute. So first, uh, geometry is imported into Grid Pro, and the blocks are uh, created. The block creation process is very flexible, so it has to just have a um, a rough topological representation of the geometry. So uh, once the blocks are created, then there is this stage of association where uh, you have to identify the faces which have to be projected to the uh, geometry IDs. This is a very um, uh, easy process because you're not manually going to project. You're just going to specify where uh, the grid faces are going to lie. And once that's done, then you it is given to the iterative grid solver, and then the iterative grid solver runs to give you a grid which is uh, quality optimized. Now the uh, case that we have considered the volute. So I will just go through a few steps which uh, uh, which was taken to build the blocks. So here you can see a 2D cross section which is just roughly representing the um, cross-section of the volute. The, the 2D cross-section is rotated to form, create blocks. Once it's rotated, then the blocks are extruded to the outlet, and then they are just connected. So here you can see that it's a very rough representation uh, of the volute. So this blocking remains the same for any topological change that uh, Mattia was uh, showing uh, earlier. So however the geometry varies, this blocking is just going to remain the same. So once you have this crude blocking, then we create a, a radially extruded block just to create a O-grid. And once it is done, then it is given to the uh, grid solver. So you can see that the grid solver is actually projecting the blocks and then trying to move on the geometry so that it uh, smooths and gives you a, a quality optimized orthogonal uh, and smooth uh, grid. So now what, what happens when you have variable geometry? Uh, the major, yeah, I think now we will look into the cases set up uh, that is uh, which gives us the variable geometry. The volute uh, file is here, which is an STL file. This, um, the template file, which is the blocking, which actually has the boundary labels in it. And um, we also have a, a quality script in here, which constantly monitors the iterative solver to see if the quality criteria are satisfied. And once it's done, then it exports to the uh, TCFD uh, format. So as I mentioned earlier, the, the manual process involved here, now once you have created, becomes a template for any subsequent variation in the geometry. So now, uh, once we get the variable geometry from the uh, from cases, uh, it's just uh, automatically um, activating the grid solver, and then it gives the uh, grid for each uh, variant of the geometry and is uh, exported directly to TCFT format. 
and yeah that's that's pretty much from my side the boss uh, um, okay thank you Samuel it was impressive good so so now we know how to how to mesh in uh, grid pro and yeah so again let's uh, move a little bit in um, the webinar so now it's time to to say a little bit about the TCFD, which is which is the last part of the project, uh, the simulation. So, yeah. So I will start. So please let me give a brief description. What is TCFD? So TCFD is a comprehensive high-tech CFD code, which is focused and unlimited. It's designed to be a complete CFD workflow that covers all the engineering steps from the pre-processing over the simulation run to the very complicated detailed post-processing of the results and it's independent on any other software and uh, on the other hand it's fully compatible with other software so for this reason it can be easily integrated uh, into an existing process chain in any organization uh, here you can see the uh, the graphical interface how TCFD looks like uh, you can you, you can do pretty everything in it uh, in terms of CFD setup so so it's everything is in the graphical interface and um, yeah so TCFD uh, is always focused uh, on particular workflows by particular applications so TCFD core business has always been turbo machinery simulations like pumps uh, or fans, uh, turbines, compressors, hydro turbines, uh, wind turbines, and many other kinds of turbo machinery, both radial and axial, uh, both compressible and incompressible fluid flows. And later we decided to extend what had worked so well in turbo machinery field to uh, and external aerodynamics. Uh, so now TCFD can simulate uh, cars, the aircraft, uh, and many other external flows, and also uh, many kinds of internal flows like valves, uh, piping systems, uh, manifolds, and yeah, some others, like for example, ship hydrodynamics. Uh, uh, TCFD is a unique CFD code because it is unlimited, which means our clients or the users can keep it forever and they can use it uh, for an unlimited number of users, jobs and cores, and they can use their resources to the fullest. TCFD is focused on particular workflows. So for example, a fan engineer uh, uses the fan inputs, uh, names, units, and results and the same pump engineer or compressor engineer, for example. Uh, TCFD is fully automated. So for this reason, TCFD uh, is extremely effective. So the automation reduces also the chance of human error. So automation is a big thing nowadays in CFD and CAE. Uh, TCFD has, has a very good technical support. We keep custom approach to every customer and to every issue we solve. Uh, there are uh, real preset tutorials in TCFD. Currently there are about, or there are exactly 23 tutorials which are based on the real machines on, and the real projects we did in the past. And uh, now the TCFD user has no doubts about how to start and what, what's the best practice settings. Yeah, and TCFD is very progressive because it successfully merged uh, the benefits of an open source and with the benefits of commercial codes, which means it's it has professional technical support, uh, graphical interface, uh, it's robust, it's accurate, it's automated, it's well tested, and it's simply it's ready for the, for the industry. Uh, uh, the user can simply put the data in. TCFD does its jobs. It, its jobs uh, writes the writes the results down, and in the end, the user picks the final report, and that's it. So TCFD can be either used as a black box, or it can be used as a fully sophisticated CFD code, where all the options are open. So I would say that 
uh, the beauty of the CFD is that it's the user who decides how deep to dive into CFD or not at all. Uh, yeah, so this was briefly about the CFD. So now I would ask Radek, Radek, are you ready for your part and introduction of the workflow and the results? Yes, Lubos, I am. It's perfect. So I will I will switch to you in a second. Yes. Okay, show my screen. So hope you can see my screen uh, at least in a few seconds. Okay. Takes time. Still takes time. All right. Even we have the shortest wire, right? It takes more time than. <laughs> Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, we are sitting next to the door, and I have to say, uh, we can't see your screen mm -hmm. still. Okay. But the last okay. time, last time when we did it, it was it took exactly a little bit more time. So let's mm -hmm. give it a few few more seconds, and then then we will yes. jump jump out, out of the window, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now now it Perfect. works. Now now we can see okay, your screen. Okay. okay. So thank you, Lubos, for introduction. So, in, let's say in this last part, I will briefly present the TCFD setup for the for the particular application for this volume geometry. Then I, I will briefly show the connection in cases, and at, at at the end I will I will show you the results of the optimization and and some visualization and how it looks in cases or in in TCFD. So what what is important that TCFD is ready to be part of any workflow as a fully automated CFD simulation tool. So for that purpose to be run in an automated way, it needs as an input either CAD geometry and the mesh is generated itself inside or to, to use some advanced meshing tool. So the external meshes can be imported as in this particular case. The second input is the preset simulation setup file, so-called TCFD file, which contains all the necessary parameters for, for TCFD, TCFD simulation. And because it is automated, so it automatically exports the outputs. Basically, there are three types of outputs. First one is an, a comprehensive HTML report, which includes all the graphs, images, and tables. Some are connected to the particular application, then the user can preset some custom visualization. And of course, the data files, the structured data files in CSV format are stored and can be connected, for example, to cases to read the data and use for, for, for the optimization tool and for the decision what will be the next, the next design step, for example. To be fully automated, TCFD includes the batch mode, which can be run by the program called CFD processor, which basically manages all the all the all the steps behind the, the TCFD workflow. And it can be simply run as a command CFD processor with the provided uh, with the provided configuration file and just just tell where to store the results. And the option all run means that it all runs it all everything by one command. So if we move to the particular setup for the for our volute, volute case, volute example. So the volute is a part of the compressor geometry. So the solver setting is as follows. So it is it will it will or it is a steady state solver for the compressible flow for the turbulent flow with standard K omega SST turbulence model the mesh generated by grid pro has very fine fine boundary layer so we can employ the low reynolds wall functions and each solver or each iteration of the design loop will take up to 500 iterations so we uh, the optimization was performed on the volume geometry only so we simplified simplified the, the process because we, we save a lot of computational time to to simulate just the volute, not the whole compressor geometry. So we need to model the flow condition at the, the rotor volute interface. So there are models, let's say, by a special 
special boundary con condition type called directed inlet mass flow rate. So basically before that we, we run the simulation with the full geometry, then we we focus on the on the load point, on the best efficiency point, which was around 0.25 kilograms per second. And we, re we read the meridional and circumferential angle, angle at this interface. So to, to, to see to see the to see the direction of the flow at this interface, which are then set by this particular boundary boundary condition, and also the rest of the of the of the let's say flow condition is 400 kelvins as an inlet total temperature, and at the outlet we set the static pressure, which is two atmospheres. So how to employ it into the whole the process chain into into the cases. So from the grid pro we get the external mesh, so which is exported from grid pro and gen generated in grid pro, and then we need to create some template configuration file which is then put into cases and is used for 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 any other under simulation. So it is basically a text file including all parameters and its values for of TCFD setup. And it can be simply created in, in graphical user interface. So to just prepare the templated file, templated setup, we take the volume from Grid Pro, preset the preset the TCFD simulation, save the configuration file, and then we put it into cases and can be run in the in the optimization loop to simulate the, the whole workflow. So I have simple example. So this is the graphical user interface. In the settings part, we set the CFD simulation in very standard way. So we set time management, so steady state, the physics, we use the compressible solver. Inside the components, we easily, re easily read the mesh from Grid Pro. We just assign the, the type of the boundaries Basically, there are three inlet, outlet, and the, and the wall. It, it is automatically read, so it, the setup is pretty straightforward. Then, for example, the inlet condition by this directed mass flow rate type with the particular flow rate and the direction direction of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the velocity at the, at the inlet to the, to the volume, which was used from the previous simulation of the whole compressor geometry. And yeah, and basically in this way we set it, then we can run and test the simulation to be sure that everything is well set up and that the simulation converts well. So I already did, did before the webinar. So at the end of the simulation, we have, there is an automatic, automatically generated report, which is directly appears here or can be any anytime open in, in in any web viewer. So it contains all the information about the simulation, for example, the details about the mesh, the details about the Y plus. So for example, yeah, the average Y plus is something around two. What what we are interested in is in the flow rate, flow rate, which is here, flow, um, total, total pressure difference. So we, we will look for the total pressure difference which I'm a little bit above, which is here. And we will use this as a objective function. So we would like to really decrease, to optimize the design to decrease the total pressure difference of the volume. So we can see that the convergence is okay and everything go, um, everything, everything seems to be well-defined and the simulation goes well. So we can use this, we, we can use this for the optimization, yeah. At the same time, we can directly see some visualization of the results. So after that, yes, yeah, so what I what I haven't showed that here basically all the settings is saved in this setup TCFD file, or you can save it by your own in your own defined file, and this file then can be used in the cases for the connection. As I already said, the TCFD outputs our HTML report, structured data file, which can be also put inside 
the case it, it is structured so you know at which place for example the total pressure difference is placed and can be then anytime read for example into cases for and for the optimization solver and of course you can do any visualization in the graphical user interface you can save the particle setup and put into cases to be generated for any for any design then we have this connection so Mattia already described the process of the of the of the overall workflow so case it generate the generate the CAD geometry which is exported into STL which is loaded by grid pro using this STLs the mesh is generated then this mesh and preset templated configuration file is slowed by TCFD simulated results are, are evaluated put back into cases somehow processed and decide what will be the next design variant and goes in the loop until the optimized design is shown so how it looks in cases so Samuel has already described the part belonging to grid pro so now the part which belongs to TCFD so the most important part is this setup volute file TCFD file which contains all the parameters which can be also for example coupled with with cases as a parameter for example for how many processor how many iteration and so on then as a results values there is the efficiency final csv file which is anytime generated by tcfd then you can tell which part which value uh, take from this file and this value can be defined as a parameter to cases using which this evaluate total pressure difference which can <clears throat> which can be then used as a to define the objective function for the optimization process and of course we use the positive value of this because objective function is always or the optimization process always looks for the minimum value of of the objective function which gives objective function well so this is the connection and then the optimization itself so some so just briefly what what we have done we use the this type of processor intel xeon uh, with 24 cores so one design loop containing all the steps mesh generation cfd simulation results evaluation takes about 15 minutes for the for the parameterization we use or for the optimization we use six design variables which Mattia has already described and for example here i would like to emphasize that the volume should be fitted to the to the existing geometry so some parameters has to be fixed and those parameters which affect somehow inlet and outlets must be fixed so therefore we have chosen just six design variables the objective function is set as a total pressure difference so then we perform the global analysis so to somehow reveal the the, the design uh, design space or, or design parameter space with 300 variants then we use for the best design point we use the local analysis based on some gradient approach so-called t-search method with another 30 variants which gives us the best best design we found and the whole optimization process took about three days just three days to simulate this amount of variants so at the end so we have this simulation so here somewhere here is the sobol approach so we have here 300 designs with the best designs found and for the best design best design we run this t-search algorithm which looks for the better design in the neighborhood of the best design of the sobol sequence and here we found yeah the best design with with this total pressure difference so as the results so if we compare the total pressure difference to the base design which has the total pressure difference about 6090 pascals so we it optimized we optimized this design to have something like 6200 pascals 
which is the improvement improvement about 10% compared to the to the base base design any any <clears throat> any simulation gives us the shape of the of the particular part of the of the geometry as well as the CFD simulation results with the visualization, for example, of the total pressure, and we can we can always compare and analyze analyze what you get. Additionally, at the end, you can compare, for example, your base, base design and optimized design to show the differences. So, for example, we can here see a nice improvement near the tongue area. So we can see that the recirculation part is uh, is not uh, available or it's not visible for for the optimized optimized design as far as we can for example visualize the total pressure contours along some slice going through the middle of the of the inlet to the volute so there are many many ways how to analyze analyze the resulting resulting design and to decide if it is okay or is still some some space to optimize more some part of the of the design okay and just to conclude we have created a case study report to this particular particular application and this this pdf is available so you can you can get and read all the parts of this of this workflow we have presented here so I think it's all from my part, and it's time to go, to give the floor back to Lubosh. Lubosh. Okay. Oh yeah, thank you, Radek. Okay. Thank you, for, thank you, Radek, for your contribution. So I'll take back uh, the presentation, and uh, here we go. We are approaching to the to the last part of our webinar. So it's Q and A. So I would like. I would like to ask you to to ask your questions right now. So ask your questions, and we will we will pick few of them to answer them right now in the webinar. And don't worry, all the questions will be answered. So uh, feel free to ask, and we will we will gladly 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 answer your your questions. Uh, yeah so we haven't so many questions right now so i will i will answer the first one from chris eisenmenger who asks us uh, did you already do the experimental validations of your best variant and uh, no chris we we did not it, this is just purely purely uh and a virtual uh, test so uh, not not yet um okay so uh yeah so does anybody of of you see any any appropriate question i uh, this might be something to uh, for samuel to say a bit more about but there is a question uh, regarding are the topology points in the grid pro uh, fra files parameterized in cases or are they fixed in the fra file so um as far as I know, in this case, we haven't uh, parameterized these topology points. We are uh, in discussion with GridPro to um, to even uh, improve uh, the workflow and um, be able to create uh, some more customized topologies related to certain models that we export from cases. But maybe uh, Samuel can also say two words about that. Yeah, uh, I think at this point, as Matthias said, yes, it's not done inside cases. It's primarily the grid pro projection algorithm uh, trying to work its way out between all the variations uh, of the volute. Yeah, yeah. okay. So, uh, yeah, does, does anyone see a, a question? Okay, I, I can answer one one simple question. How many cells are in the volute for this particular simulation? So I will just I will, I will just check the report. And here is the answer. So for this particular we had yeah five hundred and ninety thousand cells for each for each design. 
so almost 600, 600 cells for each design. Okay, so uh, yeah, so we have some questions here. So does anybody see uh, the one he would like to answer? Um, maybe there is something which geometries other than volutes can be optimized in this loop. So basically there is uh, this, the general loop would work for all kinds of uh, geometries. We've heard maybe about the TCFD part that uh, there are certain workflows uh, for certain applications. So uh, using this, the suitable workflow, you can optimize um, all kinds of uh, geometries in, 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 this, uh, in this process. For the cases part, it's uh, spe to speak about what we do here. Uh, yeah, you, it's a, cases is a generic uh, parametric modeling system. So you can parameterize all kinds of geometry and optimize them. So maybe that's for this part. <laughs> okay. I have another question here, which I can answer, uh, which says, is the volute mesh fully matching? especially at the tongue. Uh, yes, it's fully matching. Um, it, um, it actually, you could see that the volute mesh in the tongue is also trying to ensure that it's highly orthogonal to every variation uh, that is created by cases. Yeah. Okay. So the, any, any other? Questions and answers uh, of organizers? Well, if not, then then I would say this would be this would be it. This would be it from us for in today's webinar. So it's time to finish. So we would like to thank you for your attention. We would like you to stay tuned. Feel free to contact us. I'm sure you know how to do that. The questions about cases are to be sent to friendship systems. The questions about grid pro are to be sent to Grid Pro uh, address and the questions about uh, TCFD are to be sent to CFD support. And yeah, so feel free to contact us. We will gladly support you in your projects. It's our job and also, also a pleasure. So feel free to get in touch. Uh, well, anything more to say, uh, Mattia? No, I think that's it uh, from me. Um, I am, of course, I'm looking forward for uh, interested people to get in contact with us you see the contact address here and if you have more questions or if you would like to discuss your application uh, with us then yeah feel free to get in touch with me no problem okay very well and uh, Samuel would you would you conclude yes um, yeah I think um, uh, it's quite interesting to see a lot of questions we I probably personally email the questions um, uh, to each uh, person who have asked and um, yeah uh, thank you okay uh, Radek what do you say okay just thank you for watching and as Mattia pointed if you have any question or any topic to to discuss so do not hesitate to contact us we will gladly gladly chat everything with you so so do not hesitate to contact us and have a nice have a nice rest of the day. All right then, so we leave you with that. So thank you for your attention and we are looking forward to collaborating with you and stay tuned and bye-bye for now.